All right, y'all. Peace and blessings. God bless y'all. I'm Jarvis Kingston, and I hope y'all doing all right and staying strong and solid in the times that run. I pray that you have repented and that you are baptized. I pray that you are safe, protected, and prayed up. And I just hope that whatever situation that you're going through, that the Lord is with you, that he guides you, he protects you. He looks out for you and comforts you as well. I pray that your mental health gets better, and I just pray that the Lord clears up your situation as well. Amen. Thank God for another day. Let us give him glory, praise, and honor for waking us up again and getting us through the day, giving us food in our belly, closing our back, shelter, roof over our head. Let us thank God for bringing us back home safe, protecting us on our travels. Amen. Thank God for protecting us while we're running errands. Amen. Yes, yes, y'all. Welcome, family. Shalom. Greetings, all people. Yes, yes, all peoples, all tongues, all nations, all tribes, all languages, all four corners of the earth. All faces and races, God bless you all. Thank you all for the listen. Thank you all for listening and supporting so much. I truly appreciate it. Heavy. Amen. Let us worship and praise the Lord. Let us fellowship and gather. Let us be together as one unit, as the body of Christ. Amen. In these last days, in these end times, in the days of Noah that we are in, we have to pray for one another, uplift one another, encourage one another, support one another, but also have to help out so many other people out there. So much people out there are broken, damaged, and feel very hurt and very vulnerable. So we have to reach out to these people, give them the word of God, give them the gospel, give them the truth, give them sound doctrine, and show them an example of what Christ-like people are. Amen. Yes, yes, y'all. Let us love the Lord our God with all of our mind, heart, and soul. Let us love our neighbor as we love ourselves. Let us know the Lord better. Let us obey the law, statutes, and commandments that God gave us, and let us keep the commandments if we love Jesus, as Jesus said. And also, let us know, let us obey the gospel. Let us know the Lord better. And let us do the Father's business, Father's will. Let us put our hands to the plow. Let us keep working for the Lord until his, he comes back. Amen. Yes, yes, y'all. I hope that you all had a blessed day today. If you didn't have the best day today, I pray that better days come your way. If you're going through a storm or a trial or tribulation or a hardship or a difficult time, I pray that the Lord gives you more strength to push through. And I pray that things get better for you at the end result and that you can have a testimony to share with everybody. Amen. Yes, yes, y'all. All right. So in today's message, we're going to continue the Bible reading series. All right. We finished off the book of Second Kings chapter uh, 6 through 9 reading, I believe. So now we're on 2 Kings chapter 10 reading, all right? So we're just going to read the book of 2 Kings continuation, and then we'll close out with prayer. We'll close out with the, the priestly blessing, and then we'll also close out with giving God all the glory, thanks, and honor. Amen. Yes, yes, y'all. So we got to hang in there, stay strong, be patient, people. I know there's so much things that you've been um, wanting from the Lord, whether it's confirmation, revelation, answer, clarity, uh, I know you've given out your thanksgivings, your prayers, your requests, your petitions, you know, make it up to God, your supplications, make it out to the Lord, you know, cry out to the Lord, all right? Whatever is on your mind, heart, and soul, cry out to him about it, amen? The Lord will answer prayers, man, let it be according to his will, and let it be in his son's name, all right? Let the Lord have his way with it, let let, let things be done God's way from now on, amen? Yes, yes, y'all, you have to trust the Lord in these end times, nobody else, only him, all right? So let's go to the book of 2 Kings, chapter 10, reading and continue, all right? Here we go. The book of 2 Kings 10, verse 1. And Ahab had 70 sons of Samaria, and Jehu wrote letters and sent to Samaria, uh, to the rulers of Jezreel, to the elders and to them that brought up Ahab's children, saying, Now as soon as this letter cometh to you, seeing your master's son are with you, and there are with you chariots and horses, a fenced city also, and armor. Look even out the best and meet us. But they were exceedingly afraid and said, Behold, the two kings stood not before him. How then shall we stand? And he that was over the house, and he that was over the city, the elders also, and the bringers up of, of the children sent to Jehu, saying, We are thy servants, and will do all that thou shalt bid us. We will not make any king. Do that thou do thou that which is good in thine eyes. Excuse me. Then he wrote a letter the second time to them, to them, saying, If ye be mine, and if ye will hearken unto my voice, take ye the heads of the men, your master's son, and come to me to Jezreel by tomorrow this time. Now the king's sons, being seventy persons, were with the great men of the city which brought them up. And it came to pass when the letter came to them that they took the king's son and slew seventy persons and put their heads in baskets and sent them sent him 
sent him them to Jezreel. And there came a messenger and told him, saying, They have brought the heads of the king's sons. And he said, Lay ye them in two heaps at the entering in of the gate until the morning. And it came to pass in the morning that he went out and stood and said to all the people, Ye be righteous. Behold, I conspired against my master and slew him. But who slew all these? Know now that there shall fall unto the earth nothing of the word of the Lord, which the Lord spake concerning the house of Ahab. For the Lord hath done that which he spoke by his servant Elijah. So Jehu slew all the remained house, or all the remained of the house of Ahab in Jezreel, and all his great men, and all his kinfolks, and his priest, and his priest, until he left him none remaining. And he arose and departed and came to Samaria, and as he was the as the shearing house in the way, Jehu met with the brethren, the brethren of Ahaziah, Ahaziah king of Judah, and said, Who are ye? And they answered, We are the brethren of Ahaziah, and we go down to salute the children of the king and the children of the queen. And he said, Take them alive, and they took them alive, and slew them at the pit of the shearing house, even two and forty men, neither left he any of them. And when he was departed thence, he lighted on Jeh Jehanadab, the son of Rechab, Rechab, coming to meet him. And he saluted him and said to him, Is thine heart right, as my heart is with thy heart? And Jehanadab answered, It is. If it be, give me thine hand. And he gave him his hand, and he took him up to him and to the chariot. And he said, Come with me and see my zeal for the Lord. So they made him ride in his chariot. And when he came to Samaria, he slew all that remained unto Ahab and Samaria till he had destroyed him, according to the saying of the Lord, which he spoke to Elijah. And Jehu gathered all the people together and said unto them, Ahab served Baal a little, but Jehu shall serve him much. Now therefore call unto me all the prophets of Baal, all his servants and all his priests. Let none be wanting, for I have a great sacrifice to do to Baal. Whosoever shall be wanting, he shall not live. But Jehu did it in subtly, subtly to the intent that he might destroy the worshipers of Baal. And Jehu said, Proclaim a solemn assembly for Baal, and they proclaimed it. And Jehu sent through all Israel, and all the worshipers of Baal came, so that there was not a man left that came not. And they came into the house of Baal, and the house of Baal was full from one end to another. And he said unto him that was over the vestry, Bring forth vestments for all the worshippers of Baal, and he brought them forth vestments. And Jehu went, and Jehanadab the son of Rechab, into the house of Baal, and said unto the worshippers of Baal, Search and look that there be with you none of the servants of the Lord, but the worshippers of Baal only. And when they went in to offer sacrifices and burnt offerings, Jehu appointed fourscore men without, and said, If any of men any of the men whom I have brought into your hands escape, he that letteth him go, his life shall be for the life of him. And it came to pass, as soon as he had made an end of the offering of burnt offering, made an end of the offering, the burnt offering, that Jehu said to the guard and to the captains, Go in and slay them. Let none come forth. And they smote them with the edge of the sword, and the guard and the captains cast them out, and went to the city of the house of Baal. And they brought forth the images out of the house of Baal and burned them. And they break down the image of Baal and broke down the house of Baal and made it a drought, a drought house until this day. Thus Jehu destroyed Baal out of Israel. How be it from the sins of Jeroboam, the son of Nabat, who made Israel to sin, Jehu departed not from after them, to wit the golden calves that were in Bethel and that were in Dan. And the Lord said unto Jehu, Because thou hast done well in executing that which is right in mine eyes, has done unto the house of Ahab, according to all that was in my heart. Thy children of the fourth generation shall sit on the throne of Israel. But Jehu took no heed to the... Oh, hold on, let me repeat that, y'all. And the Lord said unto Jehu, Because thou hast done well in ex executing that which is right in my eyes, and hast done unto the house of Ahab, according to all that was in my heart, thy children of the fourth generation shall sit on the throne of Israel. But Jehu took no heed to walk in the law of the Lord God of Israel with all his heart. For he departed not from the sins of Jeroboam, which made Israel to sin. In those days, the Lord began to cut Israel short, and Hazael smote them in all the coast of Israel. From Jordan eastward, all the land of Gilead, and the Gadites, Gadites, and the Reubenites, and the Manassites, 
from Aurora, which is by the river Arnon, even Galid and Bashan. Now the rest of the acts of Jehu and all that he did and all his might, are they not written in the book of, of the Chronicles of the Kings of Israel? And Jehu slept with his fathers and they buried him in Samaria and Jehoa, Jeho, Jehoahaz, his son, reigned in his stead. And the time that Jehu reigned over Israel and Samaria was 20 and 8 years. So that's the book of first, second Kings chapter 10 reading. So this discusses how Jehu uh, slayed all the people who worshiped Baal all throughout Israel and cast down all those images and um, killed all those who was worshiping Baal. Uh, Baal worship was a heavy thing going on in that time period, that whole Jezebel era and what have you. And even though physically he killed the people who worship Baal, whatnot, the spirit of Baal still dwells among people to this day who still worship ancient gods and goddesses, um, different nations or what have you. You get what I'm saying? So um, the same way how God destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah in the book of Genesis, to this day, people still practice Sodom and Gomorrah behavior. You get what I'm saying? So, But it shows you how uh, God placed certain people there to put down his wrath or judgment or to do a certain thing, and Jehu was doing that. But then when you read later on chapter 10, uh, Jehu... Uh, didn't take heed to the law of God, the, the law of the Lord God of Israel, and Jehu did what his father did. You get what I'm saying? And he made Israel sin. So you keep seeing this pattern of kings doing one thing that's good, then doing the rest that's bad. You see what I'm saying? Like they'll do one thing about have you, and then turn right back around and do something bad. So uh, that was Israel's problem with their kingship in that time period. All right. So now we're gonna go into the book of Second Kings, chapter eleven, reading. All right. Second Kings chapter 11, here we go. And when Athaliah, the mother of Ahaziah, saw that her son was dead, she arose and destroyed all the seed royal. But Jehosheba, the daughter of King Jeram, sister of Ahaziah, took Joash, the son of Ahaziah, and stole him from among the king's sons, which were slain, and they hid him, even him and his nurse, in the bedchamber from Athaliah, so that he was not slain. And he was with her... And he was with her, hid in the house of the Lord six years, and Athaliah did reign over the land. And the seventh year, Jehoiada, Jehoiada, and fetched the rulers over hundreds with the captains and the guard. Oh, excuse me, hold on, let me repeat that again. And the seventh year, Jehoiada sent and fetched the rulers over hundreds with the captains and the guard, and brought them to him into the house of the Lord, and made a covenant with them, and took an oath of them in the house of the Lord, and showed them the king's son and he commanded them saying this is the thing that ye shall do a third part of you that enter in on the sabbath shall even keep even be keepers of the watch of the king's house and a third part shall be at the gate of sir sir and a third part at the gate behind the guard so shall ye keep the watch of the house that it be not broken down and two parts of all you that go forth on the sabbath even they shall keep the watch of the house of the lord about the king and ye shall come past, come past the king round about, every man with his weapons in his hand. And he that cometh within the ranges, let him be slain, and be ye with the king as he goeth out and as he cometh in. And the captives over hundreds did according to all the things, to all things that Jehoiada, Jehoiada, the priest commanded. And they took every man his men that were to come in, the, come in on the Sabbath with them that should go out on the Sabbath and came to Jehoiada. Jehoiada, the priest, and to the captains over hundreds did the priest give King David spears and shields that were in the temple of the Lord. And the guard stood, every man with his weapons in his hand, round about the king from the right corner of the temple to the left corner of the, of the temple, along by the altar and the temple. And he brought forth the king's son and put the crown upon him and gave him the testimony and they made him king and anointed him and they clapped their hands and said, God save the king. And when Athaliah heard the noise of the guard and of the people, she came to the people into the temple of the Lord. And when she looked and behold, the king stood by a pillar as the manner was and the princes and the trumpeters by the king and all the people of the land rejoiced and blew with trumpets. And Athaliah rent her clothes and cried, treason, treason. But Jehoiada, the priest commanded the captains of the hundreds, the officers of the host and said unto them, have her forth without the ranges and him that followeth her kill with the sword for the priest had said let her not be slain in the house of the lord 
and they laid hands on her and she went by the way by the which the horses came into the king's house and there she was slain and there was she slain and Jehoiada made a covenant between the Lord and the king and the people that they should be the Lord's people between the king also and the people and all the people of the land went into the house of Baal and break it down his altars and his images break they in pieces thoroughly thoroughly and slew Matan the priest of Baal before the altars and the priests and appointed officers over the house of the Lord. And he took the rulers of over hundreds and the captains and the guard and all the people of the land. And they brought down the king from the house of the Lord and came by the way of the gate of the guard to the king's house. And he sat on the throne of the kings. Excuse me. And all the people of the land rejoiced and the city was in quiet. And they slew Athaliah with the sword beside the king's house. Seven years old was Jeho Jehoash when he began to reign. So that's the book of Second Kings chapter 11 reading. So um, the woman Athaliah, the mother of Ahaziah, she was a very uh, I know, angry woman, very violent as well. <laughs> you know, she wanted to cause some problems and slay people. She also reigned for a bit as well. But um, the priesthood and the Israelites, they slayed her outside the temple of the Lord because they didn't want to kill somebody in the holy environment like that so they took her outside and then did it so um she was just angry over her son's death you know and you know you can't tell the mother nothing when her son is gone right so that's what happened within the book of second kings chapter 11 reading and then they also killed the priest of baal and broke down the house of baal as well all right so now we're going to go into the book of second kings chapter 12 reading all right the book of second kings chapter 12 here we go in the seventh year of Jehu, Jehoash began to reign. At forty years reigned he in Jerusalem, and his mother's name was Zebiah of Beersheba. And Jehoash did that which was right in the sight of the Lord. All his days wherein Jehoiada the priest instructed him. But the high places were not taken away. The people still sacrificed and burnt incense in the high places. And Jehoash said unto the priest, All the money of the dedicated things that was brought to the house of the Lord, even the money of every one that passeth the account, the money that every man is set at, and all the money that cometh into any man's heart to bring it to the house of the Lord. Let the priest take it to them, every man of his acquaintance, and let them repair the breaches of the house, wheresoever, wheresoever any breach shall be found. But it was so that in the three and twentieth year of King Jehoash, the priest had not repaired the breaches of the house. Then King Jehoash called for Jehoiada the priest and the other priests and said unto them, why repair ye not the breaches of the house? Now therefore receive no more money of your acquaintance, but deliver it for the breaches of the house. And the priest consented to receive no more money of the people, neither to repair the breaches of the house. But Jehoiada, the priest, took a chest and a board and bored a hole in the lid of it and set it beside the altar. And on the right side, as one cometh into the house of the Lord, and the priest that kept the door put therein all the money that was brought into the house of the Lord. And it was so when they saw that there was so much money in the chest, then that the king's scribe and the high priest came up and they put up in bags and told the money that was found in the house of the Lord. And they gave the money being told into the hands of them that did the work that had the oversight of the house of the Lord. And they laid it out to the carpenters and builders that route, route upon the house of the Lord and to masons and hewers of stone and to buy timber and Hood stone to repair the breaches of the house of the house of the Lord, and for all that was laid out for the house to repair it. Howbeit there were not made for the house of the Lord bowls of silver, snuffers, basins, trumpets, any vessels of gold or vessels of silver of the money that was brought into the house of the Lord. But they gave that to the workmen and repaired therewith the house of the Lord. Moreover, they reckoned not with the men into whose hand they delivered the money to be dis bestowed on workmen for they dealt faithfully the trespass money and sin money was not brought into the house of the lord it was the priest then Hazael, the king of syria went up and fought against gath and took it and Hazael set his face to go up to jerusalem and jehoash king of judah took all the hollow things that jehoshaphat and Je jehoram and ahaziah his father's kings of judah and ded had dedicated and his own hollow things and all the gold that was found in the treasure of the house of the Lord and in the king's house and sent it to Hazael, Hazael, the king of Syria. And he went away from Jerusalem and the rest of the acts of Je Joash and all that he did. Are they not written in the book of the Chronicles of the kings of Judah? 
And the servants arose and made a conspiracy and slew Joash in the house of Melo, which goeth down to Salah. For Josashar, the son of Shemith, and Jehozo, Jeho, Jehozobad, the son of Shemur, his servants smote him and he died. And they buried him with his fathers in the city of David. And Amaziah, Amaziah his son, reigned in his stead. All right, so that's the book of Second Kings, chapter twelve, reading. All right, so that was just another view of how the kingship kept getting passed down, and how some kings did right, some kings didn't, and how some of them kept getting slayed. You know, so that kingship was real. That royalty and kingship was very brutal, very cutthroat, and it also discussed about the money within the house of the Lord, things of that nature. And it's also interesting that the book of Second Kings chapter 12 described this because when you read the New Covenant, the New Testament, and how Jesus, you know, got angry and flipped the tables over money being in the house of God and money matters and things of that nature and mixing money and the things of the Lord. And you see clearly why um, you don't mix those two things. You don't mix God and money. You don't mix those things because those, uh, that, you know, money causes a lot of problems. Uh, people do a lot of crazy things for possessions. You know what I mean? Whether someone is a believer of God or not, money is always an issue dealing with people's character and hearts, you know. And you saw how some of the money was good, pure money that was sent out the carpenters and all that. And some of the money also wasn't good, you know. So uh, that right there just shows you why Jesus said you can't serve two masters. You can't serve God and mammon. You know, you can't. You're going to love one, hate the other. Jesus said that because um, this example showed it right here. And. All in all, man, you got to have your heart all the way in with God, you know. You can't let nothing stir your love away from the Lord, all right. So always keep in mind of how you um, put things in its proper perspective. Spirituality is always more important. Being spiritual is always more important than materialistic. Um, sometimes people value materialism over spiritual matters, and that's the problem. Today and to, in today's world, heavy. And it's always been a problem back then as well, you know, because what you... Uh, venerate and make you make it an idol so people worship money people worship possessions uh people people worship all types of things but the god of israel but the god of abraham isaac and jacob so um there you have it child all right that's the book of second kings chapter 12 reading so we're just going to close out on that for now i'll keep it a bit more brief just those three chapters readings from 10 11 and 12 all right so we'll continue the bible series on the next episode what I would love to do as I close out is give all the glory to the most high God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and praise his only begotten son who died for our sins. Amen. All right, so here we go. Yes, hallelujah, amen. Yes, yes, he is the hope for humanity. He is the Adam, the second Adam, the last Adam. He is the advocate, the true, almighty living God, the almighty true and living God. Yes, he is the Alpha and Omega, amen. He is the apostle of our profession, the arm of the Lord, the atoning sacrifice for our sins, the author and finisher of our faith, the author and perfecter of our faith, the author of life, the author of salvation, the beginning and the end, the beginning of creation of God, the beloved son, the blessing only potent, the blessing only ruler, the branch, the bread of God, the bread of life, the bridegroom, the capstone, the captain of salvation, the chief cornerstone, the chief shepherd, Christ, the Christ of God. The consolation of Israel, the cornerstone, the counselor, the wonderful counselor, the creator, the day spring, the deliverer. The desire of the nations, the door, the elect of God, Emmanuel, the eternal life, the everlasting father, the faith and true witness, faithful and true, the faithful witness, the first and the last, the first begotten, the firstborn from the dead, firstborn of all creation, the forerunner, the gate, the glory of the Lord, God, the good shepherd, the great high priest, the great shepherd, the head of the church, the heir of all things, the high priest, holy and true. The Holy One, the hope, the hope of glory, the horn of salvation, the I am, the image of God, Jehovah, Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Shalom, Jesus of Nazareth, Jesus, Jehovah Jireh, the judge of Israel, the judge, King Eternal, the King of Israel. He is a King of Kings. Amen. He is a King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the King of Saints, King of the Ages, King of the Jews, the King, the Lamb, the Lamb of God, the Lamb without blemish, the last Adam, the lawgiver, the leader and commander, the life, the light of the world. The Lion of the tribe of Judah, the living one, the living stone, the Lord, the Lord, our righteousness, the Lord, Yah, Yahweh, Yahuwah, Yahweh, Shai, Yahweh, Ben Yahweh, Ahai, Yesha, Yeshua, Hamashiach, Barakatha, Shalom, Shalom, Yeshua, Elohim, Yehosha. Yes, the consuming fire, the sustainer, the sufficient one, the God of heaven and earth. Yes, his son sits at the right hand of him. His, his son is the carpenter who could fix all things. Amen. Restore all things. 
Yes, yes. The most high, nothing's too hard for the Lord. Amen. With him, all things are possible. All right. He is the father of lights. He is the father of the fatherless, the father of widows. Yes, yes. He is slow to anger. The Lord of all, the Lord of glory, the Lord of lords, the man from heaven, the man of sorrows, the mediator of the new covenant, the mediator, the messenger of the covenant, the Messiah, the mighty God, the mighty one, the morning star, the Nazarene, the offspring of David, the only begotten son of God, our great God and savior, our holiness, our spiritual husband, our Passover, our protection, our redemption, our righteousness, our sacrifice to Passover lamb, the power of God, the precious cornerstone, the prince of kings, the prince of life, the prince of peace, the prophet, the redeemer, the resurrection of life, the resurrected, the revelation, the revelator. Yes, yes, the righteous branch, the righteous one, the radiant one. Yes, the perfect example, the rock, the root of David, the rose of Sharon, the rule of God's creation, the rule of the kings of the earth, the savior, the seed of woman, the shepherd and bishop of souls, the Shiloh, the son of David, the son of Abraham, the son of God, the son of man, son of the blessed, son of the most high God, the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him, the son of righteousness, the just one, the one mediator, the stone the builders rejected, the true bread, the true God, the true light, the true vine. Yes, he is the truth. He is the way. Amen. He is the way, truth, and life, the wisdom of God, the witness, the wonderful counselor, the word, the word of God, the word of Yah, the word of Yahuwah, the word of Elohim, the word of Yeshua, Hamashiach, the word of Yahweh Shai, the word of life, the word. Amen. Yes, yes, we touch and agree. We serve an awesome creator, and this son is amazing for dying for our sins. Yes, yes, his son is just way too awesome. He definitely is, you know. He definitely is too awesome. He is the seed of Abraham through promise. He is the seed of Adam regarding humanity. He is the seed of David as far as kingship. He is the seed of God as a deity. He is the seed of Jacob as a nationality. He is the seed of Judah. That's his tribe. He is the seed of Shem. That's his race. He is a Shemite. He is Shemitic. He is of Shem. And he is the seed of woman His prop, as far as prophecy goes. So Christ's race, his bloodline goes back to Shem. Amen. Yes, yes, in the authority and the power name of Jesus Christ, you are renewed, restored, redeemed, healed, forgiven, embraced, loved, graceful, steadfast, new creation of God, born again, baptized, repentant, everything, anointed and all. Yes, yes, you are blessed by the almighty, true and living God. Don't ever lose sight of that. Don't let somebody tell you otherwise. Amen. God and his word is true. The devil's a liar. Amen. Yes, yes, y'all. So there you have it. All right. That's the message for today. Just the book of Second Kings, reading chapter 10 through 12 reading. All right. We'll continue on the next episode. And just y'all just stay strong, man. Y'all stay. Y'all hang in there, man. I know things are a bit different. Everybody got different challenges and different scenarios that they're, 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 um, they're facing. I know your situation may feel a bit overwhelming or a bit much at the, at the but you got to trust in the Lord. You have to. Only the Lord going to get you through it. Only the Lord could do the, the amazing things that he could do for you. I'm telling you. Um, you tried with all your might and power and, you know, you're in a situation that you're in. You try to look for help from others and nobody helped you. So only the Lord's going to help you. Amen. Only the Lord is the true redeemer, the true deliverer. All right. With God, all things are possible. Don't you ever forget that. Bless is the person who trusts in the Lord and not man. Amen. Yes, yes, y'all. So there you have it. All right. I pray to God that whoever listens to this message, I pray that you repent and get baptized. I pray that you start your life over for the most high. I pray that you have new beginnings. You turn from your ways. I pray that God bless you with new hands to prosper. That God bless you with a new mind, a new heart, a new soul, a new approach, a new attitude. I pray that God gives you new friends to pray with and fellowship with. I pray that God gives you more objectives and more tasks to do his will and his business. I pray that God gives you new scenery and brings you to a new place. And I pray that the Lord just pours out his love, his spirit, his fire, his radiation, just everything all over you. I pray he, he put all that over you, his presence, the anointing, everything, double portion, a hundredfold, all of that. All right. Because we need the Lord's protection. We need that anointing. We need his power. We need his love, his grace, his mercy. We need all of that. We need his word to spread to people. We need his power to um, heal other people or. Uh, preach to somebody something all right we got to do some type of service for, for somebody out there all right there's somebody out there that needs prayer somebody out there that needs thanksgiving a request a petition somebody that needs deliverance healing somebody out there needs a new life amen this world is going in a very evil negative dark direction but we are the lights of the world we are the royal priesthood we are the everlasting foundation the everlasting generation all right so let us be the last examples of love kindness patience joy peace harmony you know what i'm saying because that's what that, that's the, that's what god wants us to operate on that's why the fruits of the spirit is joy patience kindness you know things like that because 
we we got to exemplify that, y'all. We have to. We can't do what the world is doing. We can't follow the ways of the world. All right, we can only we only have to follow the word that the Most High gave us. We have to only follow His Son, because He's the way, truth, and life. Amen. That's how you have it. All right. All right? So let me give you all this priestly blessing and wrap it up, y'all. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his counsels upon you and give you peace. Shalom. I'm Jarvis Kingston. I got much love for y'all. God bless y'all. Peace.